the uh, 14th of January. Uh, we're at the FETC in Orlando, Florida, and we're talking with Adora. And how do you say your last name again? Svitak. Okay. And also, we'll start off by saying, uh, for people who want to learn more about you, you have a web address, don't you? Yes, adorasvitak.com. My name is hard spelled A-D-O-R-A-S-V-I-T-A-K.com. Okay, very good. So, um, uh, first of all, tell us about this daily video that you're streaming to us. Well, every day I actually teach other students about reading, writing, history, and I stream that over Ustream, which is an online uh, video method that you control live video with. And so I am firstly connecting to a remote classroom, and I'm also allowing people really everywhere to see me talk to them. So it's kind of a two-way interaction. And what topics do you normally cover? Um, it can range from personal narrative to editing and revision, so in the writing area. Uh, I also talk about subjects like child labor, for instance. So it's really what I'm covering for the students that day. And I also sometimes do commentary on topics that I'm interested in. Uh, I put a lot of videos on YouTube as well. I filmed one about Balloon Boy, for instance, uh, during that time. And so uh, just any newsworthy items, it really does vary. Uh, typically, it would be a live stream video of my teaching, uh, and it's also very good. And you have some uh, visuals to look for us to look at today? Yes. Actually, my first book, Flying Fingers, Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing, this was my first book. I published it at the age of seven, and it contains nine of my stories, as well as tips for writing. It's really for students, from a student, as well as parents and teachers. So it's a kind of how-to write book with the stories to go along. My second book, Dancing Fingers, I co-authored it with my older sister, Adriana, and poems are in here. We both really enjoy writing poetry. Yes, some really nice the, illustrations, and I wanted this book to make poetry come alive for other students. And uh, as such, I have uh, a lot of stuff about writing poetry and learning poetry. Okay, and and finally, it's an advanced copy of my third book. It's called Beyond the Skies. It's my first full-length novel with kind of undertones of political satire. Uh, so this was inspired by the last eight years of the Bush administration. And, uh, so it's a really fun book. Well, wow, that's, that's really impressive. You know, political satire is something that even adults struggle with. So it's great you're getting in there and giving that a shot because um, uh, over a lifetime, it takes a lot of writing to really get mastery. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about, uh, we heard very good things about your presentation at NEC. Uh, that's the National Educator Education Conference. Uh, tell us about the innovations you talked about there. Well, some of the things I talked about at NECC was especially on interactive whiteboard technologies. So that's something new that I've been experimenting with I have an active board in my own home that I use during my teaching. So it was mainly about the technology aspect and how technology can enhance education. Because I know that a lot of teachers uh, believe that technology can be in some, in some ways disruptive to learning. And I, in my presentation there was really about how it can enhance learning. At my presentation here, I'm presenting an IOPA keynote. Uh, and I'm talking about how technology can help empower students, really turn students into teachers, allowing them to experience learning on a new dimension. Very good. And what was that presentation earlier today, Active Classroom? Yeah, Kids Eye View of an Active Classroom. So that was focusing on the technology, the interactive whiteboard, uh, the, all the interactive classroom uh, products. Yeah, I liked how you were uh, doing the, the word choices and also dragging different uh, uh, graphics around on the screen and pairing them up with their concepts. Yes, um, and I think that's one of the cool things about interactive whiteboards is that for kids, you really want to move around and apply to especially kinesthetic learners. And so getting up there, being able to interact with those words, move them around is, a, I think, a good way to experience it. I also like very much the, the way you summarized uh, five things kids like to learn through. Uh, like the, what was it, the gooey or the... Gross and weird gross stuff. Gross and weird stuff, yeah. See, no educator is going to write about that. But it's very important that we have your contribution to tell us, you know, what kids really like. Thank you. Well, gross and weird stuff, uh, I am a big believer in the power of that, as I said. And so, um, and I think that it does take a kid's eye view sometimes, because educators and adults tend to talk about the more serious topics, differentiation, learning, which I think is important, which I talk about also. But there's also more lighthearted aspects. Kids, I mean, we love gross and weird stuff, make believe more than you might be able to tell at first sight. Mm -hmm. Very good. And um, uh, a lot of technology, let's talk for a moment about how kids are communicating today and sharing information. We have a lot of new technologies, obviously, and we have social uh, 
uh, media sites uh, that help us. Tell us about your perspectives. What do you see uh, about how kids are communicating and sharing? Well, I think that there's just a huge future out there for uh, the digital classroom and, and putting these different aspects of social networking, you know, and all kinds of new technologies to use. I think that as kids, we're going to be using technology in some way or another, but it probably won't be educational. So instead of shunning this technology, confiscating it, the teachers and the ministries really need to learn how they can bring it in and make it part of the classroom in education. So for instance, social networking, putting it to use uh, for schools. There are many different um, companies that do have Schoology. I actually, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but I actually saw them down these of course. So I've really been learning a whole lot about uh, different products that um, spouse that, I guess. And so um, I think it's important, though, for teachers and administrators to realize what they can do and not be afraid of, of these new technologies, Twitter, Facebook, etc., but really people use. Very good. I like that. Um, and in wrapping up, let's talk about uh, the future work that you'll be doing with school districts. I want to hear about that. I, w um, I actually already work with school districts quite a bit, and I'm looking forward to the future. So some of the school districts I talked to, actually Broward County here in uh, Florida, I did a session with them on video conferencing. And I think that working with school districts allows me to have a larger impact, I guess, over student learning, because I'm able to talk to maybe teachers from professional development, a large group of students about a topic. And um, so I want to work with, I think, school districts around the nation and also around the world, because it allows me to have a greater impact very good. We're very well spoken. And for our listeners, uh, give us once again your web address so we can check that out if we want to learn more. Yes, www.adorasbtalk.com, A-D-O-R-A-S-B-I-T-A-K.com. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook. Um, my Twitter is AdoraSB. Uh, now, my dad is always saying, oh, people on Twitter. And, oh, a lot of people don't really get Twitter, but I think that it's a fun way to do it. Very good. Well, thanks for spending time with us today. Thank you.